Hi again, everyone. This video is sponsored by contribution from Jamie, and here is her story. Dear Ollie, hi. This is a prelude to the video you did about me called You're in Love with Who You Wanted the Narcissist to Be, 10-9-2016. Uh, As you know, I do not hold back an anonymous. I believe in putting it all out there so I can heal. I need your help so bad. I know you're the only person that understands what I'm saying. I want to break... I want to break no contact. It's been 45 days, but I need to confront the narc. Remember, my name is Jamie. I live in Clearwater, and the narc lives back home in Fort Lauderdale, where I am from. Remember, he was captain of the Boca Raton PD and now retired. Coy is his name. <clears throat> you asked in the first video if he was ever married. No, he wasn't. Nobody could endure this textbook narc. Well, to follow up, I went back at the end of October to visit friends. He found out I was coming to visit. He calls me and right away apologizes over our, over our last hundredth fight, always saying, I'm sorry I, was an, sorry I was an asshole. He said we can meet and see, and see one another. Okay, I remember exactly who he is now. Um, yeah, look, you're dealing with cop mentality here cop union mentality, <clears throat> and I think I explained this to you in the last video, cops make the worst type of narcs, and that's why a lot of them are narcissists themselves, because they have this self-entitlement. You put a shiny badge and a gun on their hip, forget about it, forget about it. Now, he's retired as a captain, making whatever the hell he was making. Is entitled. Look, cops always think that they can talk their way into or out of any situation. That's just the reality of it. Okay, so not only are you dealing with a with a narc, you're dealing with a cop narc who spent a career getting getting his way from people who were lying to him, the shadiest of the shady in society. You understand? You're no match for this dude. Now remember, he thinks I am dating someone, a fictitious man called Shane, in which I downloaded an app to text him, being Shane. Saying stuff, saying stuff like, this is the last time you will see my girlfriend, etc. He kept calling me when I was down there, asking me to come over, to come over this house. And yes, of course, nothing would happen. I held true for the fake boyfriend and said I can't. But we finally got to have coffee on Sunday, the day before I went back home. I was thinking, just maybe I will get the closure I never got from him. It was a disaster. Lord, you can't confront an arc. You see, I told I told him towards the end of our relationship that he was a narcissist. Yes, I know that was not a smart thing to do. He went down to the beach. We went down to the beach to drink our coffees. He claims his order was all wrong and threw it and threw his out. We got it from Starbucks, and my order was wrong too. Heading down to the beach, we just talked casual. But once we got down there, I needed answers. He, in his typical form, started raging. I know this man for so long, remember over 20 years, and dated him for two years. I never questioned my safety, but he was out of control, threatening to drop me off on Oakland Park, U.S., US one like I'm scared. That is literally at the corner. <laughs> yeah, you could have just you could have just messaged me uh, in a walking distance of my of my place. And it's not a great neighborhood. I grew up there a majority of my life, screaming, yelling, and driving. Screaming, yelling, and driving his BMW five like a crazy man, pounding his fist. Pounding his fist together, making absolutely no sense as usual. We got back to his house, and of course he said, I know you are making this boyfriend up. I'm going to call that number that texted me. Well, the app allowed me to set up a voicemail. I used another app to sound like a man, so he calls the number, and then believes that this guy is for real. You're playing a dangerous game messing with this guy. <clears throat> At least I think he does. You gotta remember, he's a cop. He, could, he already knew this. He already knew this before. Like, you don't think he had a way to check this out and already knew it was bullshit? He's playing you. 
At least I think he does. Remember when he came to visit me in June up here in Clearwater? I gave him an ultimatum. I will go with Shane or you will start or you start calling me your girlfriend. You see, he never called me his girlfriend, at least not to me, to everyone else, but he knew how much I wanted that title. So going back to the October visit, we went back to his house, and at this point, I was bawling my eyes out. He was saying such fucked up shit, claiming that we didn't work out because we were so different, and we could not get along, and, and we could not get along, that was one. Then there's, he loves me, but not in love with me. Then there's the one that he's been so lost and he's afraid it needs to go slow. He showed also a lot of borderline personality disorder. His fear of abandonment is so great. So he literally threw me out of his house after two hours of trying to get closure. It was humiliating, to say the least. I left crying and drove back to my friend's house. I was defeated. I kept saying to him that I would not speak to him ever again. But he keeps saying, shh, of course. We know we will just go now. I have errands to do. Will you just go now? I have errands to do. And dismiss me like some servant. Well, the next day I returned home. I thought this would be a good time to start and really do no contact. I know I can do it. I have done it before so many times, but then my whole world came crashing down. Then in my inbox on Facebook was a message from some woman. I opened it and allowed and allow it to be read. She claimed to have been sleeping with Coy for over 14 years on and off. I told you. I, I'm pretty positive I said he had something else going on. If not another one, another a marriage. He said he was never married, but he had a long-term girlfriend. I knew there was I knew this guy had a double life. I remember saying that to you. They are back on and to stop dream they are back on and stop dreaming that a man like him would want a woman like me. She was saying horrible stuff, but some of it rang true. She found out we had coffee together on Sunday. Of course Coy told her. She claimed she lost her shit and went crazy. Well, Ollie, that day I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown. I was beside myself in grief. I wanted to get his ass in so much trouble. Remember he was only he was getting ready to retire that Friday. I called him to ask what was going on. He would not talk to me. He claimed he was at work and can't talk. But he started seeing her again. After the June trip, when he saw me, back then he claimed he was going going back to Naxja, his longtime soulmate, the love of his life. She is married now, living in New Jersey. He knew I was too, he knew I was too smart about that lie. Well, this woman messaged me and is what you call, well, this woman that messaged me is what you call an opportunist with men. Probably paid for her services, and she is disgusting. A foul hooker. She claimed that she met all of his cop friends, etc., and that Coy gives her money, jewelry, etc. Even bought her a car. You see, if I did call or email the chief, he would have lost the pension and everything. No, he wouldn't have. <laughs> no, he wouldn't have. He's Boca, right? You said he was Boca. Let me tell you something about Boca PD. Let me tell you something about Boca PD. They are the biggest fucking potheads in South Florida. You want to get good weed? Go to Boca. Go go, go stop a Boca Raton patrol car. They'll get you the, the greatest fire weed there is. Trust me. It's the biggest running fucking joke down here. Every, nobody, he wouldn't have. He wouldn't have. What he was trying to avoid was his retirement thing on Friday. This was his long-term girl. This was going to be there. He's forcing you out so there's no scene. He smokes pot. <laughs> he smokes pot, takes testosterone, etc., and of course sleeps with hookers. This wonderful woman, oh, her name is Angie. So what, what does he do to calm my ass down? He has his sister call me. Well, the flying monkey was well-trained. She sent a copy of what Angie sent me. It was so graphic, but she needs to see what is wrong with her brother. I will put a copy in the email for you, but you don't have to read it out loud. The sister spoke to me for like 30 minutes over crazy stuff. Like, it's okay for men to be with hookers. That's men for you, she said. Claim that see this is this is this is cop family cop spouse mentality. Oh, they all do it. They all do it. They all do it. 
claiming that her brother really, really cares for me. It's funny. I barely spoke to his sister. Now she was all concerned about me. Please, the bullshit, she said. Oh, when you come down, we must have coffee together. And the clincher, she said, was, oh, my mother misses you so much. What the fuck? I meet his parents like maybe three times. Finally, Coy started calls. Finally, Coy called me a couple days later on the day he was retiring. We, smoked, we spoke, he claims, that he started seeing her after we were done. I asked him about the stuff he bought her. He said no cars, but he did buy her gifts. I asked what about what she said about our relationship, and he said, come on, you know it's not true. I got a lousy iPad for the first Christmas together. All the other holidays, we were in silent treatments, etc. I asked him, why did you tell her we went for coffee? All he said was, I don't know. And if he told me that weekend he was seeing, and he told me that weekend he was seeing someone, I would have never gone to see him at all. But it gets worse. She called me when I was working. Remember, I'm a nurse. I get all, I get, I get a call one day, one night while I was with a patient, an unknown number, so I answer it like a fool. She was talking in baby talk. I couldn't figure out at first it was her until the dumb bitch tells me her name and started me saying accusations to me. I just hung up. She must have gotten my number off Coy's phone with her caller ID, the phone I purchased after he broke the first one in a rage with me. I texted Coy's sister, but she never replied until days later. Not about Angie calling me, but to tell me that she works from home and she barely leaves the house so coffee would be off the table. She's the one that said it. So what set me off today is I noticed Angie blocked me on Facebook. Okay, I don't care. So I went in another way, yes, hacking, and she posted a... So I went in another way, yes, hacking, and she posted a post about a woman calling her a bitch. I don't think she was talking about me because I never called her one. And she puts these... And she puts these analogies that make no sense about a man not liking this woman and only using her. And calling the woman a pig, she is so foul and vile. Coy said she wasn't a prostitute, but she, but she more, more like an exhibitionist. It bothers me that he wouldn't call me, wouldn't call me his girlfriend before someone else did. The fake shame. But then he can go and sleep with this trash. I can't believe that he used me. I can't believe all the times that we did have. The small, intimate moments were nothing. Her post triggered me so much I needed answers from him. Why did he keep her a secret? I knew of her from his stories, but to go back with her? He slept with her when he was in a long-term relationship with Natasha. This man was never faithful, but he told me he wanted to change. He wanted to do it right. Lead led me on for two years, telling, telling to hold on. We can work this out. Time I can't get back. Please, Ollie. I'm 45 days no contact, but it drives me crazy that Angie can call me and no one cares. When I called a woman that kept calling him the last year at his home number, he made it out to be the worst thing in the whole fucking world. That it was an old friend that he did sleep with, but are still friends. What is going on? Am I going crazy? That it, that it was so wrong for me to call Mary. She's a nice lady, he would say. I know that no contact is the only way to hurt him. He has to be friends with everyone he has a relationship with or slept with. But I need answers. I need to know I wasn't for nothing. I need to know I was really cared. I really if he really cared one point, and why this piece of crap Angie, I need answers. This is her message unaltered. Please stop being so needy with a guy. You're not a woman for Koi. We have been fucking for the last 14 years. I know all the women he fucks. He is a guy that can stay hard for up to two hours, making a woman come multiple times. You don't have a relationship with him. He can just fuck you like the rest of the others. He wants to be polite when women call him. If he wants a relationship with a woman, it would be Nakasha or Margaret. I get cars, jewelry, money, travel, and good sex from Koi. This is what he is. I can get along with his family, his friends, cops. He, he does not feel anything 
with a fat woman lying on his bed while he sticks his dick in her pussy. Jamie. <clears throat> Why are you chasing this loser? He, didn't, he doesn't care about anybody. See, your problem is here, you're taking this personal. You're taking this, and I understand that's a weird thing to say for somebody you've known for 20 years and we're in a relationship with. He does this to every woman he's with. You're not any different. You're not any different. He goes through women like water. He's a sex addict. He's a user. This is what happens with a lot of cops. I wouldn't be surprised if he was a member of Charlene's old club. <laughs> Sounds like he probably is. I wouldn't. Look at the lengths you're going into hacking this woman's account. Like... At this point, there's no reason. There is no closure to be had here. Look, you got taken in by a womanizing user who spent a career in manipulating people and using bully tactics to get his what? You're taking this personally, okay? This woman who, e look, this is pathetic what she emailed, if this is real. She has no problem with this guy of 14 years sticking his dick wherever the hell he feels like it, as long as she gets money and jewels. What are you competing for? Look at what you're competing for. Look at this fucking disaster. Look at this. Look at what you're doing. You're hacking at her account. and You're worried about if this piece of shit ever cared about you? I would hope he didn't. I would hope he never cared about you because then you might have a better chance of never seeing him again. He doesn't love you. He never did. He doesn't love anybody. Anybody. This guy is juggling so many different narcissistic balls in the air through these women and prostitutes and drugs. As soon as he said Boca. <laughs> oh, shit. Boca. Boca. Look, Jamie. I understand you got hoovered in by this guy hard. I understand it's hard when you realize you've been taken advantage of in such a horrific way. But look at what, what you're seeking answers from. Look at this. Look at this woman that's upsetting you. You would let him go around and stick his dick wherever he wants and prostitutes and all. And that's what you're going to gaslight me about? That he goes around and fucks everything, but he still comes and buys me... Oh, what are you competing for here? That's the problem with South Florida, man. This is that that's the way a lot of women are in South Florida. It is a fucked up place. And it's easy to get caught up in it. Because the dysfunction down here is everywhere like that. It is everywhere. That isn't normal. I couldn't even keep all the names straight. Look at how much effort you have to put. And I don't even know how you keep all these women's names straight, but you can. Like I said, like I said, you're in love with who you wanted him to be. Nothing has changed from the first video I did for him for you. You're still in love with who you wanted him to be. He's not that person. He's nowhere near it. Look at the shit. Look at this. Look at it. What do you think you can fix all this? He don't want it fixed. He likes it. 
And she might have told you the greatest piece of truth in here. He don't have enough balls to just cut it clean. He just will take the somewhat supply and it isn't love. He doesn't love anybody. And you're not in love with what he is. I think it's partially you want what you can't have. And you're in love with, still in love with the idea who, of what, who you thought he was. And he absolutely is not that person. So, thank you for your contribution and thank you for your story once again. <clears throat> I hope that helps. Thank you everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, or a narcissist you'd like to expose, or you'd like to set up a private Skype video or phone call, you know what to do with the PayPal and the email links in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.